welcome to episode 77 of the iRockNits podcast. My name is Corey Eichelberger, also known as iRockNits on the internets, and I sit in a rocker recliner to knit, and iRock is Corey spelled backwards. So that's where that come from. I just like to set that reminder up every now and then that I'm a rocker recliner knitter. <laughs> Uh, today I have a special episode for you. So this little portion I'm recording on the 4th of July and uh, I have on my hot dog and dog <laughs> dress that I got from Kohl's. If you have a Kohl's in your area, they do these kind of holiday themed uh, dresses. They're kind of a jersey material. They're just really light and airy and so I put that on today. But the rest of the podcast has been pre-recorded because I had, well you'll see all kinds of stuff that I was gonna show. But I'm going to just do a short little bit today to tell you a couple of things. I am running a sale on my top five patterns. So I went out to Ravelry and looked to see which patterns for me sell the best. And the five patterns are the High Ho Shawl, the Knitting at the Library Cowl, the Pump Up the Plaid Blanket, there's a reason that that one's special today. The Toad Hollow Tunic and the Up North Cabin Socks. So right now you can get one or two or all five of those patterns for 50% off. All this week through July 9th, uh, using the coupon code on Ravelry, TOP5 in all caps. And so if you're interested in one, two, three, four, or five of those um, top five patterns. I have those on sale all week for 50% off. So you can just add them to the cart all at once and check out. The, there is a bundle in my design. So if you go to iRockNits Designs at the top, there's a bundle with the list of the five so you don't have to remember them because I couldn't even remember them. <laughs> um, and so you can do it that way and go to the bundle and then, and, and then check out that way. But my new design is finally the plaid pillow. So here is pillow number one. It coordinates with the red, black, and gold uh, blanket that we had done with the pump up the plaid blanket release, which happened in January. And I finally got the pillow knit, uh, woven, stuffed, the pattern written, and then test knit. It just, everything, <laughs> it just takes a while. And I think I didn't really realize that I was gonna do it until later. So on the back, I used stockinette stitch and just used whatever yarn I had um, left over. Um, so this one was knit by uh, sample knitter, Beth. Thanks, Beth. She's so, so positive and uplifting about all my designs all the time. So I love her dearly. And she knit this one and uh, then I knit the bigger one. So here's the blue one. And like I said before, when I talked about the plaid blanket, this is garter stitch. Plain and simple, you knit plain garter stripes. And then you just take a long, five inch long weaving needle and you go under and over the pearl bumps in uh, segments of eight, 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 and four. And you just leave the fringe off the side. And then on this one, on the back, I just put some stripes back here like this. You could do the back in garter. You could do the back in one color. You could do both sides as plaid if you wanted to. And then you just seam the two pieces together. So you just knit two pieces. So it's quite a quick and easy knit. So here we go. We have the blanket here <laughs> and the pillow, which is kind of fun. I do know that a number of people who knit the plaid blankets had leftover yarn. So it's a perfect use for that. And we just three needle bind off to all the edges. So you get this really nice, easy edge. You just have live stitches and then you just bind off and stuff a pillow form in it. So it really is quick and easy. These would be great for uh, kids rooms, um, for a person that has bad back problems and wants just a small pillow to put behind their back in their chair. You could do them in all, you could do them in, you know, any colors that you like whatsoever. So anyway, the pump of the plaid pillow is live today. So I do have a coupon code for the plaid pillow as well. If you have never purchased the plaid blanket and now you suddenly want it, you can get the two of them together, put them both in your cart and use the coupon code plaid set and get the set of the two patterns for $8. So normally they're six and six, so they would be 12 and you get them for eight. 
Then I will also have just a plain coupon code for just the pillows to so say you already own the blanket and you might have gotten that because you were a newsletter subscriber and you used that coupon code. Always subscribe to my newsletter on my website for coupon codes. I always send out coupon codes to those people as well and you'll get $2 off the pillow using the code PLAID. So capital letters PLAID or capital letters PLAID SET and you can get money off on all the things this week. Now I'm gonna flip you back to a podcast that I recorded last week and I hope you enjoy it all and we'll see you all in two weeks. Uh, but let's start out with what I'm wearing. This is my Friendship Road t-shirt. It has been washed and laundered. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna say 50 times. And this yarn just washes and wears like nobody's business. It's from the Minnesota 52 book. It's a t-shirt. I wear it all the time. It's very soft and comfortable. If you're looking for an easy to knit summer t-shirt, I would highly recommend it. Um, I have one in several colors and I do wear them a lot. Hi, did you come to say hello? Hi. With some help from my husband, we have carried up four giant Sterilite boxes full of knitted items. <laughs> I have been thinking about doing this episode for a while and uh, it's all about felting. Felted items, I have a lot of felted patterns out on Ravelry. Almost all of them are free. I do hope to update some, them someday, make them checklist patterns as well as to offer them for a price. But I thought it might be fun to just go through them quickly today and show you some of the things that I have felted over the years. Um, back in about 2000 and one or two, I moved to Richmond, Virginia and lived in Glen Allen. And it was kind of the height of the felting craze. Everyone that was knitting was felting. And I designed my first knitted project, which I'm sure will come out of one of these bags, uh, one of these boxes today. Uh, but I wrote it up as a little pattern and hawked my wares and started to go from store to store to teach felting classes to people. And the more I taught, the more I felted items so that we could have more and more samples in the stores. At the time I was teaching in three different knitting shops and I was just going back for more and more felting. A felted bag is a perfect project to start on as a new knitter because a lot of your twisted stitches or little mistakes can go away in the felting process. So it was a good idea at the time to teach a felted bag as a new, you're also using bigger yarn and bigger needles. And so it was a great way to kind of dip my toe into teaching and that's kind of how I got started. But what happened today was we brought the boxes up, we stacked them up and I opened the first one and I spread them out on the table. So throughout this time, I'll just open the next box, kind of go through what's in there. I have printed out a bunch of felted patterns um, so that I can give you some details and we'll just see how this goes. I think it should be a walk down memory lane for me and maybe fun for you to see some things that you never thought about actually felting before. Uh, there are a lot of bags, but um, different sizes and shapes, and so you might see something that you really like, and they're not all mine. I did uh, felt a lot of other people's patterns back in the day as well. So let's start out with the first one that was on the top, and this is a little flower pot bag. That's what it's called. And I purchased little flowers and used some fun fur for grass. And I think I used these as Easter baskets for Kylie when she was little. This is a little rainbow in the sky, and then there's little bees sewn on, and it just has a little round bottom. So it would have been much bigger, and then I would have felted it in the um, washing machine and dried it, and then it turned into this little flower pot bag. And so this is a free pattern by me um, uh, out on the internet. Here's the bottom of the other one. This one has a little ladybug, and I just stitched little stems into the, the bag before felting. So you get these little stems. There's a little bunny button in the grass down here on this one. Here's a little leaf with a little ladybug on it. Here's another little bunny. So I just embellished with like dragonfly buttons and flower buttons to make this flower pot bag. So this one was written. These all went up on the internet in 2010. Um, so Ravelry started in about 2008 
and it took about a year for them to get people online and kind of involved in it and then I at one point I realized that I could put all my free patterns out there so they're all dated as 2010 but they were all written years before 2010 just so there's no confusion um, so this was knit in um, worsted weight. It says this is a darling purse for a little girl or for an adult woman for a garden party. It also works really well as an Easter basket. Use bright fun colors and green fun fur for the grass as a background for your flower garden. You can also sit a pot inside of this. So if you don't do the handles, you can sit a pot in it and have a plant come out of it. So that's a really cute idea too. If you've got leftover wool and you just want to knit a little tube and felt it down and put it around a pot, you can decorate it in multitude of ways. So that's called flower pot. The next one that I have was a backpack and Kylie was going to kindergarten or first grade and fun fur was all the rage. So there are a lot of things with fun fur, but remember you don't have to put fun fur on anything. And so I knit her this little backpack. It's got uh, straps here and a handle. This is twisted. And then this has got cinch holes where you just tied some cotton yarn through the little holes that you made so that it wouldn't felt shut. It's got the little flap here and you can tie and cinch it up, tie a knot, and there you go. So this is called Felted Backpack. This is also by me. Uh, what did I say? Send your little one off with a custom knit and felted backpack in the colors of their choice or make yourself a fun carry-all for your everyday errands. So this is also in worsted weight on a size 13 needle. So I'm guessing that on all these I held the yarn double. So this was the original one. That's Kylie's. And then this was mine at the time. So I did it in the bright colors, of course, and um, I don't have this threaded right, but then you could cinch it up this way. It opens up quite big on the inside. You always start with a garter stitch bottom. So you make a square and then you pick up all the way around and knit in the round. So they're fairly seamless. There's not a lot of seaming to be done. And then this one has the flap here. It goes over the top, just like that. And then here's the last one. Here's a giant one. I think I did write these in two sizes. So they have a different um, bottom size that you cast on for. So this would have been, again, um, garter stitch, knit flat for the bottom, picked up around the bottom, and then worked its way up. These were really fun to carry. And still, without the fun fur, would be a really fun, very wearable project bag to carry all your knitting stuff in and have an actual backpack and then you just tied, make yourself an I-cord and you felt that as well. They're really large on the inside. This one's as big as like a grocery sack, okay? This is kind of the bag that started it all. There was a book that came out called The Knitter's Stash. It was one of my favorite books ever. I wish someone would do it again. I should write it again. <laughs> they contacted the, their 20 favorite knitting stores in the United States and asked them to share one pattern. And then they included them in this book called The Knitter's Stash. I'm sure it's available in used bookstores out there, but this particular bag was in that book that came out in 2001. Um, favorite patterns from America's Yarn Shops. Janet Scanlon designed this bag in response to one of my yarn shops discussions about the perfect knitting bag. Her sturdy, stylish solution holds a project or two. It's light and easy to carry. It has a practical flat bottom and ingenious drawstring construction. The felted finish is durable and water resistant. And this was the color of the original one in the bag. And it's lovely because you knit this color work pocket, felted it and stitched it on the outside, and then it had this knob here for a closure that I didn't make, but you, you could cinch it up this way by pulling the two ends in the opposite direction, which is really super clever. It's a giant bag. There's the bottom. It, it's obviously, I carried it because it's all full of you know, little 
felted balls that need to be gleaned off of there. But was a great project to knit. It was an Aran weight, um, 11 stitches to four inches on a size 11 needle. So big yarn, big needles, knits up really quick, and then you just, you just felt it. So that was from Knitter Stash. Then we have the Felted Flower Power Purse and Tote. So here is, this came out in 2001, so it's your after 9-11 bag when we were all waving flags, proudly, uh, proud to be American. Um, and then I just stitched a little red star on the front and it's a big bag, square bottom, pick up, nice sturdy straps, great, great big tote bag, bigger than my head on this one. There are multiple sizes in this, a perfect purse for any occasion, the size of a paper gift bag, it sits well with a flat base construction, opens wide at the top, the tote bag is the size of a paper grocery bag and is the perfect knitting tote. So there were two sizes, there was this big size and then there was this smaller size. These get a little misshapen in the basement, but I think you can see there I sewed big buttons around the top of this one. And so that one is called Felted Flower Power. So here is the yellow version, Flower Power, that's what it's named for. And these sides will both, there's a little button over here and a little hook over here so that you can hook it closed if you don't like a bucket purse because it hangs open. So then you get that shape when you hook that little button uh, loop around the button and it kind of closes your top for you if you want it closed. Super cute. Run it. This is a smaller, a round version. This is a rounder version of that same color combination, which is just really fun. Yellow and pink, hot pink. Okay, now I have a giant felted angel. Look at her. Oh, her nose is little. Look at her. This is a Christmas angel. Used to sit under my tree or on my tree. I used to really have an affinity for little pineapples, so I put a little pineapple on her. And you could embellish her any way that you want. This was a pattern from two old bags. I don't know if you guys remember them. They were originally out of Minnesota. And they, um, they were formerly wool you order, and you could order kits from them. Um, I was felting all the things at the time. I sewed these little pineapples around the bottom to hang on there as decoration. I'm not really sure why, because, I mean, pineapple is a sign of hospitality in Virginia, and so I must have wanted to embellish her and to have her be a little more, not quite so homely, but isn't she cute? All right, felted angel by two old bags. Okay, I did find the two old bags website and they do still have all their felted patterns available out there. So you can still get a lot of felted patterns from twooldbags.com. This is the original bag that started it all. I figured it would be in here. I saw a woman at a yarn store in Minneapolis before we moved from Virginia who was carrying a felted bag and I said, What's the pattern? And she said, I just knit stripes and felted it. So then I, when we got to Virginia, I sat and figured it out. So you knit this bottom square, pick up around, use up all your felted wool scraps, just stripe it randomly or do a rainbow or whatever you choose, and then add the, the straps to the top and you get just a really cute little purse. This one is under felted rainbow stripe bag as a free pattern on Ravelry. And I have several iterations of this one as well. Then this is probably one of the more popular ones that I actually knit. This is the pumpkin bag. It's shaped round like a pumpkin and very full. And I knit 20 of these, right? Like everybody wanted one at the time. It was fall. It is, I wanted to make the perfect fall knitting bag and this is what I came up with. I love the tote size version for all my knitting projects and because it's felted, your needles won't poke through and the smaller purse size is a real show, shop, show stopper for carrying around town. So it's a, this is the giant size and it is 
big and has um, like gathering in it. So it comes in, um, it's real big and comes around. I don't know if you can tell how ab absolutely big that was, but it started out with this more octagonal shape on the bottom. Wasn't really a circle or a square. And I picked up around, okay, I'm racking my brain going way back in time. So that's the pumpkin one. And then I did messenger bags. So lots of messenger bags. I, I think they were popular back during this time. So here's one with a flap over the front. This has like uh, little bits of the yarn in here for decoration. So there's one striped. This has just got a narrower bottom that you pick up around. You make a garter bottom and you pick them up. And then here's another one with fun for it had my initial but then it also had a, a handle back here and it had a pocket in it you can put a pocket in all of these before you felt them you knit yourself a square sew it around the three sides and when you felt it it just all felt together and did not ever felt closed so you can always have a pocket in there so that's another messenger bag and here is another one in all the bright colors and <laughs> some more fun fur. The flap can also be tucked inside, but it is also a crossbody, right? So you get kind of that crossbody flat look. Most of the straps I did were garter stitch, just working back and forth and knit at a little bit tighter gauge usually and then felted hard um, to make them so that they don't stretch out. You usually make them a little bit shorter than you think you want them. And then when they're wet, you stretch them to the length you want them while they dry. This is a messenger bag going the other direction. So it's the long way, you know, it's more vertical than horizontal, but kind of a different, a different take would be longer and much narrower. The other ones went out, you know, to here. I think this one's so cute. It's a felted scarf purse. So you have your little scarf and then you just tie it around there. I can't believe I have this little scarf still on this bag after all these years. It's just hanging out there. You just tie it on the front of your go weaves in and out so you can make the bag shorter or smaller. This one actually has a welt around the bottom where you did a piece of folded um, knitting around the bottom and then it kind of sat on that that bottom piece of course it won't sit now because it's been flat in the bat in a box in the basement for a few years but yeah that's kind of a cute one this that's called felted scarf purse boy I was original back in the day I called them what they were I'm not sure which one this is but boy do I like it I might have to take that one out even though it's got fun fur on it orange and purple I'm sure that's just the felted flower power done really big because here's another. Boy, I've got so many here. I may as well just show these while I've got them up. Here's one. So you can use variegated yarn. But we always had them on display. Then I did a monogram or a lettered one where you knit yourself a piece of um, I cord kind of and sewed it on so that you could have your initial. So I think this one's called felted initial bag, but we made a lot of those um, in class back in the day. People put their initials on the front. It's kind of cute. I like this fun fur still, the, the stuff that's soft and not quite so stringy. Okay, then we have the felted jangle button bag, which I have shared on the podcast before. It has these jangly buttons that you crochet uh, cord on and then you stick it through and they all you knit them in as you go across the row you just knit with the yarn and flip the buttons to the front hold them together with a piece of felted yarn and then when it felts they all just jangle on there so that was a really uh, fun concept then this one has just little red buttons on it lots of buttons back in the day Boy, this is a doozy. 
This is the felted checkerboard purse. And it was all done in fun fur on one side. But on the other side, it was not done in fun fur. And it's probably far more wearable to this day where you've got just the felted boxes. I have a really interesting way of making these patterns um, of the boxes where you cast on and you cast on the colors and then you add attach them to the columns as you go. Um, but yeah, so you've got, it's not entrelac or anything. It was just kind of a fun way to knit some checkerboards, but I don't know about this one anymore. It kind of looks like a bowling ball bag, <laughs> but that one's called felted checkerboard. Here is a checkerboard purse without any fun fur. So this one turned out kind of cute. And I made holes in the top so that it folded up on the edges when you pulled it like an accordion, right? So like these would pull shut and hold it, hold it shut. So yeah, that's kind of a cute one because you had, you made a hole and a hole and a hole and a hole to put the handle through on the end. So that's kind of cute, right? So here is the fel a felted checkerboard striped version. So instead of checkerboarding, you just go stripes all the way up and you get vertical stripes. And it's got that nice uh, accordion closure at the top of it. But this pattern is also included in the felted checkerboard um, pattern section. This is just such a treat. If Are you a tea drinker and you need a tea cozy? Look at this little house. This is the Cottage Tea Cozy. This came out of the Knitter Stash book as well that I talked about when I first started. Um, the main body of this Tea Cozy is felted and uses approximately 220 yards. The roof, shutters, and door are added afterward and use another 100 yards. So this is, part is not felted. And it's just like a double seed stitch here and the little door. And at the time I was knitting so, making so many felted projects, but I really wanted that ribbon embroidery that they had on there. And I had a friend who did lots of ribbon embroidery. So I knit one for her and felted it. And then she did the embroidery on it. So we kind of bartered and that was my house address, 11829 back in Virginia. Isn't that cute? I don't drink tea and I just love this. I think it's so cute. I've never used it for tea. I think I set it out as a decoration over over a jar or something for a while because I just thought it was so darling. But that's from Knitter Stash called Cottage Tea Cozy. Um, Aaron weight, 16 stitches to four inches, US eight and 10 and a half needle. Super cute. Memories. <laughs> Going back. Look at this little sheepy guy. Isn't he cute? He's got a little bell around. I'm sure Kylie played with this when she was little. These are so cute. All the stuffies that you can felt are amazing. So if you've got leftover wool, and you wanna knit up quick projects that are toys and you don't wanna do stuffies that are futsy or <laughs> tiny, this comes from Felted Flock. It was a Bev Galeskis um, pattern back in the day. Um, Huh. Bev Galaskis owned Fiber Trends, the company, and those were the old blue patterns. They were kind of a turquoise blue cardstock that you found in all the local yarn stores before things went PDF. So um, this is Aaron weight, 12 stitches to 4 inches, knit on a size 10 and a half and 11 needle, uh, sheep to knit and felt in worsted or bulky weight. 190 to 215 yards it doesn't take that much and it does stand up and the picture is darling look at all the little sheep oh so cute so this one was really fun it's got a little tail it's all you can tell it's garter stitch right little round then you stuffed it <laughs> and the eyes are crooked but i think maybe that's how i did it i don't know so super cute this guy <laughs> the felted koala oh i mean if you have a little one that loves koala how cute is that so this one is also by bev galeskis um, of fiber trends it is a six dollars and 95 cents pattern on ravelry it came out in 
Mm -hmm, doesn't say. And it can lay this way. <laughs> could lay over the a headboard or a head, you know, bottom of a bed like that. A chair, I mean. I didn't even do anything to make it look cute, and it is cute, right? Like, I just sewed on some plastic eyes, which you could also do with just stitching. I think I used some um, mohair in here because this is fuzzy and soft, and that would be too. Probably held it double. Belted koala. Look at these. Aren't they cute? Belted fish. These hung in Kylie's bathroom. I hung uh, fishing wire from the ceiling and they hung like this. We had them hanging because we had uh, that kind of nautical, fun, bright colored theme in her bathroom at the time. But these were really fun to knit. This is uh, Linda Taylor felted fish. It came from the knitter stash book again. It was so popular and I was teaching so much felting that I was knitting just everything I could find. Great for class projects and stash reduction. The felted fish is knit in the round with no pieces to assemble. Use them in dorm rooms, baby rooms, atriums, baths, make a fish mobile or use as a toy. Um, Ravelry download includes copy of color charts, directions for fancy tails and directions for tiger stripes. So you can make all like the I made checkerboard ones, but there are striped ones and there are ones that have fancy tails. Uh, so those are, <laughs> those are super cute. Okay, there's a felted bunny. Oh, he saw some love too back in the day. Really cute little guy with floppy ears. This is Bunny Fun. Um, this is Fiber Trends, Bev Glaskas. Uh, these bunnies are quick and easy to knit and fun to felt. Each will be an individual because personality develops during felting and finishing. It is su suggested that you wait until you're finished to name them. <laughs> That's cute. 220 to 250 yards, you know, of just like wool, woolly wool, worsted weight wool. And you could, you could make all the different colors. There were like pink ones in the picture and, you know, cream ones and brown and black and just super, super cute. And not, not soft, but not scratchy either. And very hard wearing. Like kids could drag this around by the, for a long time and be very hard wearing. Uh, in my Ravelry page, I called this the felted lion bag, but I wanted to show it because I put other handles on it. So you don't have to have felted straps on a bag and you don't have to do the fun fur. But I think because it looked like lion, you know, a lion's mane. I think it's kind of cute still. Got matching plastic handles. Then I have felted mittens. So I have a felted mitten pattern out there. This is, here's one without the fun fur. Uh, they have a little um, decreasing section right around the wrist and then they go up fairly high, but um, fits my hand pretty nicely. And then th those are written for multiple sizes. So I have them for like childs and little babies and little kids in, in multiple sizes. So felted mittens, this is my pattern. Um, if you wanted to make a felted mitten for little ones, because they're super warm, they're really great. And use very little yarn. <laughs> this one, the, uh, you're probably in for a laugh with this one. These are felted hats. I think this original one I bought as a kit somewhere and it didn't really, um, the pattern was like a recipe. And so you just knit this big dome and then you felted it and shaped it as it as it was wet and you kind of felted it up. So you get a little bowler kind of hat on your head. But then I took that and added fun fur around the brim and <laughs> I don't know, doesn't this look like a Russian hat a bit? Um, the big ones with the big fur around the brim. There, that one's kind of cute. I have all different sizes of these. Again, you do not need the fun fur, but if you like a felted hat, these are getting smaller because I went down to kid sizes. Kylie wore these quite a bit when she was young, little, 
the little kids loved loved the fur and all the different sizes so we have all the all the colors of the felted hats oh my goodness <clears throat> All the little felted pouches and bags that I'm going to show are by Bev Galeskis um, of Fiber Trends. And she had little button ones, little drawstring ones, little ones to go with belts and things like that. At the time, Kylie was little and she had a little neighbor friend who was a boy and they would go out scavenging and they needed things to keep their stuff in. One of them would carry the pouch. We would, they would put their, their treasures in that. And then here's a little felted fanny pack like tiny little, it's on a belt, and you put a big button on it or not a big button on it, and it goes right on a belt. And this is how I would show it in class. And it would just clip on your belt loop, but would make a, a, a great little purse with a long strap too, if you just were carrying your phone. So we would put a phone around and make a little felted, phone case to carry around your neck or whatever like if you're just going to it to an, you just want your phone you don't want to lose it you don't want to drop it you could just make yourself a little there's another little pouch same concept but the little eye cord goes all the way down and around the bottom so you make a little pouch here's a little bucket tiny little round bucket bag with fur that you could carry crossbody. Oh, the kids used to play with these. You know, they just played dress up and craziness, just all the things. They would put them on their stuffed animals and other one. I think at the time, Kylie's bedroom was pink and purple. And those were her colors. And so we had a little border in her bedroom. And so I did a lot of little pink and purple things, but just giving you an idea. Then... <laughs> because hats and purses and stuff with fun fur is not enough. You might want to knit yourself a vase cover. So you could felt yourself a vase cover. And I used to sell this concept to people because do you know when you have a glass vase and you have your flowers in it and then the, the water gets all crooky and the bottom of the vase looks kind of bad? This one just didn't even have it. It's just a tube that you felted and slid over it. And it just looks <laughs> super cute. But the pattern was for the a wine cozy to make an actual wine cozy, like to take a gift to someone. So you had a round bottom and then you would sit your bottle of wine in that and you carry it. So the wine cozy and the felted vase come together because they're generally the same concept except one doesn't have the... But if you just wanted to knit up some tubes for Christmas and give everybody a bottle of wine and some cheese and crackers or whatever, you could just knit these up like easily in a day and have just a felted wine cozy that then they can pass on to other people and you could put a tag on it that says, you know, pass it along and people can to all of the parties in December that hopefully we can all go back to. But that one is... I wrote this pattern after doing a display of flowers for a knitting shop window. These felted vase cozies are a wonderful gift and cover up that old clear glass vase and hide any stems or dirty water app from showing. Add a bottom and a handle and you have an easy wine cozy. Yeah, I remember we did uh, flowers in a whole window shop and we did, were using felted things. And so that's what we, we use that for. I have felted ornaments. I know this one is a popular one that people download still quite often. Uh, I have a bunch of different felted items that you can use um, for ornaments. Um, I have a little hat that's felted and you can stitch on the outside. I had a little stocking. Then I also have these all in miniature. I think the rest of my felted ornaments are in with my Christmas stuff. Um, they're really um, more miniature. I'll put a picture in. Then I have probably the one that I carried the longest and still do to this day sometimes. This is the felted watermelon bag. This is such a fun summer bag. At the time, a woman at the yarn store was selling these ceramic buttons and they're shaped like watermelon seeds. And so I thought, oh, is that perfect or what? 
to put those on there. So this is a big bag. It comes in two sizes and it's got the bottom large square and it's about the size of a paper grocery sack, kind of like this. And it's got the big strap on it. And I did um, the pumpkin and the watermelon and then I have an apple and strawberry one that I haven't come across yet. Um, and I may not, but it's red with a green top and I made those for teacher gifts, the apple ones. They were big tote bags that were red with green. And then I made a little green felted leaf on it <laughs> and gave those as teacher gifts, the apple ones. I also have one of these in my Christmas stuff downstairs, but this is a felted front door mitten and you hang it on your front door at Christmas time instead of a wreath and you put greenery coming out of the top of it or Christmas balls. And this one is um, not felted very much. It was a sample to kind of show how big you would knit it. And then here's a Christmas one that is red and green. And then I also have it in two other colors where I have blue, um, beautiful blue sticks and white um, frosted stuff coming out of it. So hopefully I'll stick a picture in for you to see that one too. I cannot find a link to a pattern for these. I don't know if it got taken down or if I just made them up at the time. I might have just made a giant felted mitten cast on a big number and then, <laughs> then made them, but they were in the, in the box over here. We used this for years. This is a felted checkerboard. And we bought big red and black discs, plastic discs. I think we had wood for a while too. Um, but it's called felted checkerboard and this is one of my patterns and it's knit with that interesting concept where you cast on all the stitches and then you work up a row and then you pick up along one edge and you work up the next row and attach as you go. It's a really fun way to do something completely different, but this was um, just kind of a fun thing to have on the coffee table at all times um, where you would just be able to play uh, checkers. This is a darling felted hat with a boucle yarn edging that's not felted. Can you see the texture on that? Oh my gosh. I We knit a lot of these in classes. This was by a pattern from Yarn by Mills and I don't have a link on my Ravelry page so I'm guessing that the kits and stuff aren't available anymore. I'm, you know, I can try to keep looking but I didn't spend too much time this morning but this is a great little hat, right? Like, oh, it's just, it stretches a little and then it's got this wide band. Super, super cute and fun. This is one of my favorite felted projects. I used it for a class sample. In many of the felting classes I taught, a great fitting hat and looks cute on almost everyone. I will try to come up with where that came from if people are interested. Alpine boots, felted boots. Boy, if you're a skier and you don't have felted boots for the ski lodge without the fun fur, these were really fun. This is a fiber trends pattern, Bev Gleskis. These were Kylie's um, for the winter, uh, which wasn't much of winter in Virginia, but I made them for. This is a cute concept for a purse. You made a little loop on one side and you put your strands on the other side and then you fed that through and it held it closed. And then I have this, I should take that off because that's <laughs> that's a pretty, oh, there's a little piece of fun fur con on it. That's a pretty orange brooch on there. Obviously I've liked orange for a long time. And then I put some beads around this to embellish it with the fun fur. Felting, washer, flip-flops, jeans, hot water, agitation. 
Don't have to use soap. Um, you just need hot water and agitation. So it needs something to bang against. So I used to use jeans, a pair of old jeans. I've also used flip flops, you know, $1 flip flops for it to bounce up against. You don't want to put it in with towels. They used to say towels back in the day, but the lint from the towels could sometimes get embedded in the felting, the yarn, because you would get some lint pieces. And so I just don't recommend that you put it in with a towel. And your shrinkage is going to really vary. It's really hard to, I mean, you get better at it the more you do it. But uh, I take stuff to the laundromat now because they have the old machines that really <laughs> agitate. And I have a top loader. I have felted in my top loader with low agitation. It just takes multiple washes. And to me, that seems like a waste of water and resources. So I usually just take them over and in one wash, I can get felted slippers done for whoever needs them in the family because I still do do felted slippers quite often. This is my favorite felted slipper pattern. It has the double sole on the bottom. So you knit the soles twice, pick up and do short rows back and forth. And these are my husband's. Um, I used old, leftover old um, wool that I had and he wears them all the time, all winter long. Um, Kylie had pairs for a while, I had pairs. Uh, we wore them until they were worn out on the bottom. It's a fiber trends pattern. Uh, it's a great pattern. It's fun to knit. It's really fun to give them unfelted at Christmas time to nieces and nephews. They get these big giant feet. They try them on, you take the picture, then you put them in the washing machine. They felt down, then they try them on. No, they need to be smaller, then you wash them again. Um, and once you get them to the, uh, you know almost the right size and they get a little tight then the kids can put their feet in them when they're wet and they can kind of mold to the size you can pull on them a little bit and get them just exactly the size that you want them to be i like the fact that in the bottom of this box i have some things that did not turn out so well you have to have 100 percent wool it has to be feltable and not all white wool that is 100 percent wool is feltable sometimes white wool gets bleached and chemically treated so much to get it to the white or cream that the all the little barbs on the sides of the wool when you look at wool under a microscope get flat and then it won't felt. So you have to be careful with whites and creams, but you also have to be careful with things that say that they're wool and then they're not wool. So here's a bag that never felted <laughs> and wouldn't it have been cute? I mean, it's still a cute bag, but... Um, it had wool in it, but it wasn't all wool. And so the little nylon yarns in between did not felt and it stayed fairly open, like it can almost stick my finger through it. So that was a lot of big knitting. And then this one didn't felt great. It felt okay, but it's still a little open. This one has a K on it for Kylie. Um, so that big I cord, you make the I cord and sew the monogram on. Here's my um, felted, first baby booty felted concept, try. <laughs> I even put the ribbon in, like why would I put the ribbon in? I, I don't know, because it's a hot mess. It's like way too big. <laughs> but I think it's funny that I have one bad baby booty in the bucket. I have it stuffed with paper, it's funny. It just didn't work, you know, it wasn't the right size. Here's some little pink booties that were Kylie's little pink slippers. Then I have some really cute slippers and they were in my sock drawer and they're not there right now. So I don't know where I tossed them, where I put them. And I just don't, I'm not gonna take the time to look, but I'll put the picture in here. These are um, two hour felted slippers and they're darling. And they're just little tiny slip on slippers for like the back door or whatever. They don't stay on super well. They're like a ballet flat and um, the pattern came out in 2011. It's uh, $3 euro. Felt a ballet flat, knit in one piece with minimal seaming. Great to take along on your travels. They are cozy and soft, and that's what I've done. I've packed them like when you go to a hotel and you're not quite sure about the cleanliness. You want little slippers on your feet that you can come home and wash. Um, that's what I did. And then I put a little satin trim on them so you can, you can see those there. I have a felted pineapple bag because everybody needs a pineapple. 
I was really, I still have pineapple stuff. I have pineapple cookie jars and I have pineapple curtains in this room that are very, really pretty. I love them, but here is some of the last stuff. Here is a felted helmet, Ross, you know, the ice fisherman. So this is like super warm. You could wear a hat over the top of it. So you can felt kind of a liner for a hat for, some, for someone who works outdoors. Um, these are super great. And the more your head kind of sweats, I love that, that when my hat's at the dog park felt um, because I sweat and then I get in the car and ride home and then they get kind of, you know, uh, solid. They're just so much warmer. But here's a felted helmet. Uh, okay, I think that's all I have for you today. <laughs> A walk down memory lane for me, some kind of kitschy, funny, uh, hilarious, old school knitting uh, for all of you. But if you have never tried felting, a felted bag is a really nice thing to have. It's a nice thing to carry. They're very durable. You can wash them in hot water and clean them up. Um, and if you need them to be hard wearing and durable, they really are. Uh, so tell me all about anything you've ever felted i would love to hear about if you've felted stuffies or if you felted slippers or if you felted hats with fun fur for trim <laughs> i just thought it would be fun um to kind of go through some of these boxes i had not opened them in years literally i haven't taught a felting class in many years and i thought you really should go down there and see what's in those boxes and so i said to ross carry them up <laughs> And we'll go through them and we'll see what's in there. Um, and so, yeah, it was kind of fun. Anyway, until next time, keep your fork. Keep it colorful. Waddle on. No green bananas. You'll never regret ripping back. And don't complain with your mouth full. Bye, the gravy. I remembered them all. Yay. Love you all. See you next week. Uh, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to the podcast. I really appreciate it if you tell someone else about it. Big hug. See you next time. Love you all.